Welcome to the Supplement Engineer Podcast. My name is Robert Chinesky. Joining us today, founder and CEO of Fit Foods Limited and Mutant Supplements, Mr. Jim McMahon. Jim, thank you for joining us today. How are you? I am doing fantastic out here on the West Coast of Canada, having a ball, working our working our tails off as always, and <laughs> taking a few hours out of a very hectic day to have fun with you. Thanks for the invite. Uh, very deeply appreciated. I know it's a, a rare treat uh, to be invited to this show, so I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for joining us, and uh, shout out to my uh, Polish brother from another mother, Lucas, for uh, setting this up for us and, and uh, brokering this introduction. Um, first off, Jim, anytime I have a first time guest on the show, I like to get their background because the, the sports nutrition industry itself is so crazy. We all come like, it's not, you don't go to college and get your degree in supplement industry stuff. It's usually no. you're a sales guy. You could be like, I'm an engineer in a previous life and all this. We come from very different backgrounds. So let's get a little bit of your background on how in the world you came to this crazy place we call home these days. Oh, wow. This is going to be a four-hour podcast right out of the gate. Way to go. Okay. So to preface it, coming from Canada, hockey, right? So teenager, hockey, broke the knees. Knees didn't want to be hockey. And, and all my buddies know that I wasn't a very good hockey player. Uh, from that, uh, I stumbled into uh, powerlifting and weightlifting as a teenager. And I just loved it. I mean, I just thrived there. I was dealing with injuries. I, try, I was trying to get ready for uh, the World Junior uh, Powerlifting Championships, uh, while I was still a junior, so age 21, 22, mm -hmm. and I had a pretty serious uh, shoulder injury from there. And so that's how I kind of stumbled more into the supplements. Uh, I, I was working, I was the morning guy in a gym in a real rough side of East uh, part of Vancouver, uh, making $4 an hour in a dungeon, and I loved it. I mean, you asked me my favorite job, that yeah. was my favorite job <laughs> of all time. You know, going up to, or the, you know, the rookie 19-year-old in the gym. Hey, man, can you put your weights away? And the guy takes a 12-inch blade out of his gym bag and says, uh, no. <laughs> no problem. Oh I got God. him. <laughs> oh, yeah. So from there, I just fell more into the supplement game. I did go to university. I was also asked to leave university. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot of gym rat, meathead stuff in what, what I got into. I mean... Yeah. The very first supplement I ever took was L-Arginine, and I was scared crapless to take it because <laughs> didn't know what it was going to do. Uh, but apparently, 20 grams a, a day makes you gives you a furrowed brow. You know, and so stuff you like, oh yeah, I was I was heavy dosing on on arginine, ornithine, lysine, and tryptophan. Interesting. That's, so that, that's tryptophan is that for sleep or for like the the auxiliary maybe like GH benefits, like the downstream animal data showing some of those kind of things, or what was the uh... Yeah, like here, I'll, I'll give you a stone cold shocker right now. Uh, in downtown Vancouver, there was a pharmacy called Cripps Pharmacy. All of us in Vancouver knew about it in the 80s mm -hmm. and 90s. And you go see Dr. Eddie Thorpe, and uh, he would give you a one kilo bag of this white powder. And we all willingly paid like $150 for this one kilo of white Whoa. powder. And he called it oat, ornithine, arginine, mm -hmm. tryptophan. And he explained to us, you know, what the benefits were. And then he told us about uh, um, the, this one book that had come out. It was quite famous. And the, and the people who wrote the book were, uh, book were uh, uh, Sandy Shaw and Dirk Pearson. Mm -hmm. So they had a very famous book at the time. And uh, there was so much information in there in that book. And that was prior <clears throat> to designer protein, prior to, to Matterx, prior to, to Dan Duchesne. I mean, that, that, I, I, I mean, I came from, my learning time was in the 80s. Yeah. So, so I, and I got this. I feel blessed, like from a supplement industry and a bodybuilding industry standpoint, I feel blessed that I've been able to be a witness to all this history that's gone past us in the last 30 years. Like, I, I just get off on it. Oh, yeah. Well, you've also seen the massive improvements in like flavoring, texture technology, especially in the realm of pre workouts protein powders and all of that stuff. I mean, it's like you, you guys probably need the cement mixer back when you're first mixing up stuff to just like get it down or a blender, like an industrial grade blender or something. Well, I remember the first whey proteins, the you know, raw materials that we were able to play with and none of them mixed. And so nobody knew that you, you had to agglomerate them. Uh, you know, that's what the whey production, uh, sorry, the whey producers do. They agglomerate or lecithinate them. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, then when they add the lecithin, it's only like one, one and a half percent of, of the finished uh, whey protein material that we would buy. So mm -hmm. there was no instatized whey protein when we all started way yeah. back when. Oh, now it, it's a given, right? Everybody's yeah. got instant protein. But go back to flavor. I remember being at a trade show in Toronto. 
remember one of the top retail chains, uh, the owner, uh, Dave, was talking to me. He says, Jim, what's missing in the industry is a, is a go-to protein powder that actually lives up to the billing and that it tastes great. And I'm sitting sitting in the plane, flying the five-hour flight from Toronto back to Vancouver. I'm like, man, good idea now. What are we going to do here? Mm-hmm. And we came up with the name Way Gourmet. So before Mutant, right. we, we had Way Gourmet. And mm-hmm. I remember uh, uh, guys like uh, Scott Welch from, uh, from Muscle Insider and guys like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they told me all the old war stories where they used to work. I uh, can't oh, yeah. name names. And uh, where they used to work... Uh, seven or eight or nine or 10 of the marketing guys that all have way gourmet on their desk. And of course, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure their, their ex boss, uh, Paul, not mentioning any names, um, <laughs> might not have uh, taken too kindly to his uh, staff buying way gourmet, but we went a balls to the wall uh, methodology on, on the flavor. And it wasn't just throwing flavors at it. In fact, we write about it in, in an upcoming thing and uh, all marketing bullshit aside, we actually did, come up with what we call flavor layer technology because i remember I, I remember talking with so many flavor houses and, and people and said well yeah well, this company just buys this vanilla and this company just buys that chocolate and this company just buys that strawberry and that made no sense to me like a fine wine you, yeah. you have multitude of layers or a fine whiskey or scotch or whatever you're into there you go. Um, speaking my language now we're getting whiskey, there we bourbon there we, oh, there we go. some of the best product ideas come after the fourth bourbon of course so but and we actually did layer. Like, I don't think I have a recipe in, in protein powder in particular. And we also did the same thing in pre-workouts that has probably less than three or four flavor ingredients. But nobody was doing it at the time. Yeah. I don't know if everybody's, you know, st- you know, caught on and doing it. But you'll hear us talk about flavor layer technology. We started it with Way Gourmet. And it, five years later, when we came out with Mutant Mass, we just did the same thing. And so, you know, it's it's not exclusive these days. I'm not going to tell you it's patented and all that bullshit, but it's, mm-hmm. you know, we had to invent a, a process that in our neck of the woods, nobody had come up with yet. Yeah. Can you, I guess, dive a little bit deeper without divulging any like proprietary information you'll have about, because I don't think the average consumer has any idea what goes into actually flavoring a product. I mean, you might hear a flavor house and they'll send you that, Hey, this is our, you know, your rocket pop flavor, your fruit punch yeah. flavor, but what goes actually into like you've got all these raw materials and if anybody's ever tasted these free form amino acids or some of these botanicals <laughs> like rhodiola and all this, it's, it's putrid, vile, disgusting oh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, what, are, what, are, what's some of the, the magic y'all and wizardry y'all are doing when you're trying to make something palatable and enjoyable? Great question. I, forgive me. Let me brag for 20 seconds here. We are our own manufacturer and we work directly with flavor supplier so we're not waiting for a co-packer to to do the blending and then send us a finished product to taste test Mm -hmm. uh again uh you know scott welch from muscle insider uh and and others have been in our lab and so we actually do have a lab you can go to youtube you can look up any of the mutant videos you'll see big ron parlo in our lab at times and so we're in there just taste testing uh probably at at a heightened level that most people just don't get and Mm -hmm. it's not just one person's subjective opinion usually by the time we've got something that tastes good enough well we'll bring five or six or seven people into the lab understanding hey are you a pre-workout connoisseur or your whey protein connoisseur like you know what what kind of person are you your taste buds and profile so we'll probably go through 20 30 sometimes samples and i just know uh, a lot of other brands that have to rely on a co-packer to get their samples to do the taste test, and they probably don't have, uh, you know, that time bandwidth allotted to allow for mm-hmm. that level. I'm not saying ours are better. I'm just saying if, you know, one, one of the things we talk internally a lot, because we're never going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I want everybody to know about us, because you can't remember 50 things about us, just understand that we care. You know, I, we won't make anything that we wouldn't use ourselves. I know a lot of people say that. I call bullshit on some others that say that. But there's nothing that we make that I wouldn't use myself. If I'm if I'm into gainers, I'm going to use mutant mass. Yeah. You know, if, if I'm into a, a a concentrated pre-workout and all, all I want is my caffeine hit, you know, I, I don't want the balls to the wall recipe. Right. I'll use our original madness. If I want a balls to the wall mm-hmm. recipe, that takes into account getting more reps per set by ha- having the BCAs added into it. Um, then I use madness all in and so on and so on. But 
the flavoring is just it's time and temperament but also respecting flavor i you just don't wing it uh like vanilla has a it's not just you buy three or four or five different vanillas and you go, bing oh no there's there's three or four or five other ingredients you have to add to a vanilla to bring out the flavor like mm-hmm. one of the one of the smaller comments that we get but it's fairly routine it's like hey guy how come your product has like 100 and say 30 milligrams of sodium which isn't a high amount jesus no not at all no and i go well you do realize on the tongue there's five taste receptor areas and if you don't stimulate them in balance you have an unbalanced flavor salt is one of the receptors so again it's it's not psychoscience it's not bro science it's just some basic science and then some Mm -hmm. common sense and then having the patience to do it perfect um Let's rewind a little bit more into like, how did you actually start? So you have, you had your first job in the gym and you started experimenting with supplements there. Go to university. When do you start Fit Foods, uh, Way Gourmet, PVL and Mutant? How did you eventually decide to pull the trigger and say, did you, were you, uh, did you work for some other brands? And you don't have to name them if you don't want to. Did you work and kind of like break into the industry that way? Or did you just kind of say, hey, I have this passion for supplements. Let's just pull a trigger and get rolling with things. No, no, no. I, I, I can show you my resume from my my early 20s, and I had 40 different jobs on that resume. So I was just doing my thing when I was in my 20s. So I, I applaud anybody who's being irreverent and, you know, they're on their own path. And if you're destined to make shit happen, you can make it happen, I assure you. Uh, but I was in the industry working for somebody else. Uh, we actually were uh, a manufacturer. And it was a little operation, like we're talking like 4,000 square foot operation. And you could smell, you could smell the vanilla on vanilla day. You could smell the strawberry on strawberry day <laughs> throughout the office. But uh, we were also, this is when Cybergenics was a big brand. Okay. So I know a lot of current listeners probably don't even, never even heard that brand. That's okay. It's not important to go look it up, but it was massive at the time. Yeah. And we were also uh, distributing that brand as well. And then there was another brand that was massive at the time called Hot Stuff. So mm-hmm. we were doing that as well. So that was when I was in like 26, 27. Um, and I quit that job. And then a year and a half later, the owner called me back and said, hey, Jim, why don't you come back? You know, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident, a little arrogant sometimes, I admit it. Um, I said, I'll get back to you, Rich. Anyways, uh, I did go back. And then he sold the company uh, to a public company. I worked for the public company for like two weeks before I realized, uh, in my opinion, there's the legal disclaimer right there. In my opinion, they were batshit crazy. <laughs> so I'm like, I got to get the frick out of here. And yeah. in the summer of 96, I did the craziest thing ever because my wife and I weren't why we weren't married yet. Yet we already had uh, our son was already born. So he's about eight months old. So in the summer of 96, I got married, quit my job, started the company while we had an eight month old in the house. Whoa. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. That's I, a... did, I dare anybody to pull that little trick off. And then so for the next 20 months, I don't remember a damn thing. <laughs> because it was just, vroom. you know, I left no room to fail. Like there was no plan B. I just looked at my wife. I said, I got 13 grand in the back pocket. Here's my idea. Okay, go for it. <laughs> That's, that takes a pair. That takes a lot of pair and uh, a lot of trust between you and your wife, you know, that to just go for yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it definitely came with some sacrifices. You asked me mm-hmm. if I heard my son's first words or, or saw him take his first steps. I can't tell you because I don't remember. <laughs> I, was on, I, well, I was on a, a natural high of endorphins. Like You're just going for it, knowing you've gambled everything. Yeah. You gambled what little life savings you've had. Mm-hmm. And you, it's kind of like getting under, it's being in the squat rack under 600 pounds. Like you're either going to do it or you're really going to fucking do it because yeah. you don't want to fail. Correct. Yeah. So is, that's what I got from weightlifting and powerlifting was that, hey, there is no plan B here. We're just going to go for it. Interesting. Very, very interesting. 
which of the assorted companies did you start first? Did you kind of do a, was it a, a gradual progression from one to the next? Or yeah. did you have an idea of what you wanted to do? No, 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 no. Christ, me have an idea what I want to do. I just didn't want to work for anybody else. I knew supplements. I just want to, you know, give and give back and, yeah. and, and receive back. Uh, the The original company name was actually the, the brand name. So it was PVL, okay. uh, which stands for Pure Vita Labs. Um, mm -hmm. And so the whole brand was built on PVL for those not in Canada. PVL at the time was kind of like saying Optimum Nutrition or EAS, uh, you know, Dimatize, uh, Ultimate Nutrition. So we, we were in that space. It was definitely sports supplements, but it coming from bodybuilding. Yeah. So we had meal replacements. We had creatine. I had the creatine plus the glucose. I had creatine plus alpha lipoic acid slightly before some other brand did. And uh, we, we, of course, got a, a lovely letter from their lawyers telling us to stop doing that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so PVL was the original thing. And uh, up here in Canada, there's a very famous uh, greens drink mix called Greens Plus. And it's also in the mm -hmm. States. And I was friends with all those people as well from having been in the wholesale space and having you know, driven all around Western Canada and, and met over 300 store owners and all all these other brands. So I started to get into making greens powders for my brand. Mm -hmm. And it didn't make, it wasn't jiving in 1996, 97 or 98 that a sport brand would have a greens. That didn't make any sense. So we came up with another brand. Uh, the name no longer exists, but it transformed into our natural brand, which is called North Coast Naturals. So that started to become a natural progression for the products that just they weren't fitting into the PVL sports and bodybuilding mm -hmm. area. And then in 2005, um, PVL came out with mutant mass in the big red bag. Right. And so there was no brand of mutant. It was yeah. mutant mass by PVL. And so that was 2005. Again, no foregone conclusion how that was going to go. Holy crap, did we ever strike a chord? And uh, that chord has not been unstruck since 2005. We're talking 17 years later. Yeah. And I'm humble and happy and proud as, a, as you can imagine. But I had a friend call me up the other day. He goes, hey, Jim, you realize you, your mutant mass is going to go down as one of the top 20 or you know top 50 most recognizable products in bodybuilding in the last you know 30 or 40 years. I go, yeah. Uh, that's kind of cool to think about. I'll, yeah. take, I'll take that. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. So what, what gave you the idea to, to just release mutant mass? Were you getting a lot of recommendations? Was this something you or your athletes at the time were going, or did you even have any sponsored athletes at, at this, uh, when you were created the product? Uh, well, mutant itself, uh, as the brand became to be known was where, of course, we started to bring on more and more athletes, but actually in right. the P PVL heydays, we had a, a consortium of, of athletes, much like EAS did. Mm -hmm. EAS had bodybuilders and pro football players. Yeah. And we had IFBB superstar, uh, Sharon Bernot. She was one of the top three okay. cover models with Joe Weider's magazines for mm -hmm. nearly a decade. And she was from Vancouver. She came on board. We had a few IFBB uh, Mr. North Americas. And, and I had, yeah, we had, we had a good uh, stable of fun, good people there. And, okay. um, but for, for 2005, when we did the, the mutant mass, it was just its own product. And the reason why it came about is we could see that macros, uh, which, of course, a lot of the, the kids are, are talking about these days. We knew that macros were always important. And I remember back at the company I worked for in the 80s, uh, we had a product called Mass Up 1200. And so I had seen what gainers can do for, for the people who are struggling, I, when I was lifting the, for the first time when I was like 14 and from the age of 14, 18, I think naturally you're going to put on 20 or 30 pounds anyways, but I was able to put on like 80 pounds. So it was just go for it. Just, yeah. As much food as you can get, you know, po post-workout nutrition then was probably a dozen donuts and a, and a liter of milk. <laughs> get your macros in is right, brother. Exactly, anyways, yeah. um, I, I had gainer in the blood and mm -hmm. so, it was like, okay, uh, let's go and do something. And there's three of us in the room and we had a good time coming up with this crazy idea. I mean, we saw serious mass, I mean, oh, 12 pound. All right. Yeah. You know, it's about what? 15, 16% protein, you know, is mm -hmm. what the 
the makeup of the product is. And we're like, okay, well, let, let's make ours a little leaner. Let's make ours 20% protein. So right out of the gate, we're, I don't know, whatever that math adds up to, 25% higher in protein. whoop de do. Yeah. Not going to move the needle. Nobody's going to, you know, call, call the news uh, papers on and ring the bell on that. Yeah. And then one of my buddies, oh, pretty sure it's one of my buddies who go, you know what we should do? Just do 15 pound. I'm like, well, that's nuts. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, we put enough uniqueness in the product where people, that's cool. And gainers at the time were a, pretty much a dead category. Mm -hmm. And at the time, is globally speaking, there's really much a serious mass. And, and Weeder was still uh, quite a big brand back then. So Weeder, Mega Mass, Mega Mass 2000, Mega Mass 4000. Those were around still, but mm -hmm. this was the time of, of when Metarex and Myoplex and Labrada's lean body were just smashing and crashing and owning the area. Yeah. But then EAS began to, you could see the, the trend was not going to continue once Abbott mm -hmm. got a hold of them. So timing was everything as well. And when I look at it, I mean, we didn't, we didn't have that idea in our head. Yeah. Like, again, we're enough in tune with what was going on that we said, hey, man, I think this is a good idea. Let's go for it. Yeah. And that was 2005. Wow. Yeah. So 17 years in the industry. Uh, I, I think a lot of brands these days would hope to make it even five or 10 years, especially in light of certain like ingredient costs these days and shipping charges and all of that stuff. I mean, it's, tell me about it. It's a whole other ball game from where it was back in 05 or even, I would say, shoot, five, 10 years ago. Um, yeah. I've only really been in the industry since 2015 is when I left engineering to, to come into this space. Right. Um, and uh, it's just the changes since then. It was coming in on like the tail end of DMAA is when I came in oh, and yeah. amp citrate and all of that stuff. And so <clears throat> yeah. just to see the, the evolution in that short of a span, it's 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 remarkable, um, yeah. which it's, it's curious to see how, what's going to change in the next couple of years. But it also makes it a hell of a ride, too. It just makes it really fun to be a part of this space. Well, I also think the the same attributes that that worked thirty years ago are still working today. And yeah. when I talk to fourteen year olds and eighteen year olds, I go, "Hey, man, why why do you use that? Just tell me. I'll be in the gym. I'll, I'll just ask yeah. a question." And I'm finding the same th things are always going to be there. So, um, you know, one part is there is a cool factor. I'll be honest, there there the, the, yeah. a, a lot of the people who buy pre workouts in particular, they just Hey man, I bought this pre-workout. This is what I'm trying this month. And then next month they're on to a new pre-workout, which drives all of us brands crazy. Like, <laughs> like, ah, I put all this time and effort into making this. And yeah. you know, I, I think all of us brand owners need to be smart and, and go, we know the consumers are going to try other because everybody's looking for the next best thing. Correct. Now, go back to steak and eggs. Go back to your rice and tuna your chicken yeah. that never changes mm -hmm. so for for us macros is always going to be there and despite the fact the whey protein is in extremely short supply and prices are have spiked and shipping is spiking the cost of every ingredient shortages are spiking the cost of every ingredient mm -hmm. i did a quick analysis for another chain of stores uh, that we deal with and and they were saying jim how do we explain this to consumers they go tell the consumer to go buy a carton of eggs Eggs are up about 60% we're finding and protein uh, at retail is up maybe 35 or 40%, something like that. So I go, yeah. every, everything's relative. So just everybody calm down. Right. You know, don't lose your critical thinking. Everything is cyclical too. It's going to, if it's going to come up, it's going to come back down eventually. And yeah. Just... And take everything in stride, take everything in context. So right. Proteins and gainers and, and meal replacements, I don't think are going to go the way of the dodo bird. Mm -hmm. And the evidence is out there. That's what we're seeing. No, lock, no, no question about it. Yeah. Um, Y'all manufacture for yourself. So you do your own ingredients, sourcing and all that stuff. Um, how can you give the listeners a little bit of an insight into how to get, how getting things done in Canada are compared to doing something uh, domestically here in the States? Cause y'all have to go through a few more, uh, legal hurdles, especially with NPN, Health Canada, and those kind of things. So I guess give us a little bit of insight into the added cost, labor, mental stress that goes into doing some of that stuff, <laughs> if there is any at all. And so I've just, I've had a, just a, a smattering just from talking with a few other 
brand owners that are Canadian have companies up there, but I don't know. Let's like get into the weeds. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why don't we bring on some Aussie buddies of ours and let's talk TGA at the same time and <laughs> just pull them all down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in Canada, just for everybody's uh, knowledge, uh, the ca Canadian parts of, uh, sorry, it's work day. My phone's still going off here. Um, uh, in Canada, we have a little bit hi uh, higher degree of regulatory when it comes to especially the dietary supplements. Yeah. Um, and it's called the NHPD, Natural Health Product Directorate, or NHPs, Natural Health Products. That's like dietary supplements. So when you see something that's not a food, so protein powder is food unless you make certain health claims, which go past what you can say for a food. So like protein helps build strong muscles. That's an allowable food based claim for protein in general. You can make the same statement on a can of tuna if you want it. Right. But if you start making claims that go past what uh, the food you know, component, we're talking about protein com as a, as a nutrient, not as an ingredient. Yeah. That may be a little deep for some people, sorry, but that's the crap I got to deal with. That, and so, yes, stress, yeah. you want to talk stress? Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, Health Canada, like the TGA, is not good for regulatory, not good for consumers, not good for business. It's It does one good thing in the context that it does eliminate a lot of the riffraff in the industry, but there's still a riffraff. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, big time cheaters who don't give a shit are still going to be big time cheaters who don't give a shit. Right. So when you have too onerous or regulatory, especially like they have in Australia with the Therapeutic Goods Association, the TGA, that's a choke point. You're just inviting gray market to happen. And that was not the intent of what the TGA wanted. And it's not the intent of what the consumers want. And unfortunately, uh, I get a little you know, bent out of shape on this one because I've had to live this. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've been around at the beginning. There, were, there was no NHP in Canada in 1997. It didn't come around until 2004, and I've been in the industry since the 80s, so I was there at the genesis of the idea of the NHP, and we, we gave them 53 uh, recommendations. Uh, the federal health minister accepted all 53 recommendations, and and yet the when the rubber meets the road here with, with NHPs, they, uh, the government forgets about access and affordability. They, like the TGA, they've so over aired on damn near pharmaceutical quality yeah. to the point where they've choked too much of the, the cost and the access. So far, so good in Canada. Like mm -hmm. our costs aren't anymore. I, I'll, without naming names, I had one of the largest protein co-packers. We're talking baby formula size co-packer in the, in the United States, Yeah, right in the whey protein belt up in the Midwest there. And I said, Hey, you know, uh, I got uh, almost too much business on the go here in Canada. I need to get some of this now being made in the States. Uh, what are you going to charge me to build uh, 50,000 uh, of, of the five pound bag and, you know, 25,000 of, of uh, the, the, the two pound jar. Yeah. And uh, the, the prices came back. We can still make it more cost effective in our own area than, mm -hmm. than even the biggest co-packers. So, wow. in, in same products, yeah. I did the same thing with pre-workouts. I went to the, the the big dog down in Texas, won't name names, and uh, yeah, the cost, uh, we were close, but yeah. still, even with all the testing we do, because mm -hmm. NHP requires we do finished product testing, so, um, and same thing when, here's an, here's, an, here's an interesting, unique fact, is that because when I shipped from Canada into the States, mm -hmm. guess who's waiting at the border for me? The FDA. Yeah. So they'll grab uh, a pre-workout or BCA. And if I say there's eight grand or uh, I say six grams of citrulline malate on that label, I have to have an assay in hand going, here you go. So for me, I like the, the US FDA uh, regulations because I get to brag that, hey, every time I cross the border, there's an odds are they're going to grab my product and, 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 and have a go at it. Yeah. So that, that helps us when it comes to dietary supplements, especially. Yeah. Do you have, I don't know if y'all done the analysis on it, just the, the added cost that it, like it gets, uh, it, cause obviously the costs are going to, you know, uh, matriculate down to, uh, the consumers ultimately. So is it, you know, is it, is it a five or 10% increase on the final product no, I, with all these I, added, uh, Robert, I'm going to get, 
I'm gonna get you to back up because there's actually a, there, there's actually some mistaken information that I I, I laugh at it too because I've I've heard it for 20 years that mm -hmm. uh, in the states the FDA there's no regulation in the in the U.S. the supplement industry is like the wild wild west. I go give me a freaking break. It's the wild wild west everywhere because there's always gonna be somebody who wants to to cheat anyways. Mm -hmm. The 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 FDA regulations themselves are actually some of the best I've ever seen. Now. What they, what they don't have is enough enforcement, right? So it's self-regulation to abide by the regulation. Yeah. Okay. So from that standpoint, if you're going to have a real GMP certificate, we do. And a lot of American uh, co-packers uh, do have mm -hmm. authentic GMP certificates. Are Is everybody abiding by the GMP? For the most part, yes. The one area where the biggest costs are is in finished product testing. So let's say you have a, a 10 ingredient uh, uh, BCA product, just throwing out three BCAs and some other things in there. Okay. Uh, some ingredients have a lower cost to test. They might only be $80 uh, per batch per ingredient to test. So uh, if I were to say produce uh, 10,000 bottles in a batch, 10 mm -hmm. ingredients, that might be a thousand dollar assay. Okay. My cost per bottle only went up 10 cents. Okay. I, I think so. yeah. as a consumer myself, I go 10 cents. Not, not going to worry about it. No. The challenge is, is when you get into uh, brands that are just starting out, um, doing smaller batch size runs and all. They're, they're going to pay more for their finished product anyways because of the smaller batch sizes. Correct. Right? Yeah. And then when you're amortizing, assuming they're doing the finished product testing, uh, they're amortizing that, say, $1,000 test, or maybe it's a $2,000 test over a smaller uh, batch size. Yeah. And look at a multi. Okay, so multis, you you could have 30 ingredients in there, 50 ingredients. Okay, well, why do we run 100,000 bottles of multi at a time? Because that's a big-ass testing charge. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to amortize it over 100,000 bottles. If I only ran 5,000 bottles of our multi, I'm not running that bottle. Forget right. it. The, the oh, testing yeah. costs are just too high. Yeah. Um, do you think that should be something? This is something I've, I've asked a, a number of different brand owners uh, over the years. Like and your point about what you said about the FDA, we have the regulations inside. We don't have the there's not the amount of enforcers probably necessary for there. Or there's there's that arm of it is missing. But you also brought up the self-regulation, which I would prefer. Like I want the industry to kind of govern itself like. The quality companies will keep rising and the, 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 and the crap will eventually like let the consumers decide and the crap will eventually go to the wayside. Um, I think I would rather that than, you know, any kind of totalitarian measures ever like starting to build up. And I realize we are very far from that here in the States. We're, we're fortunate in that in that regard. Yeah. Um, but do you think one other thing that could maybe be added would be um, mandatory third party testing for all products in that way. Like say, every company has to have some kind of third party test with that. And I understand there's going to be considerable cost with, as you and yeah. I were just saying, but would that help even further ensure consumer safety and quality? I, I would contend much like any controversial subject, <laughs> which yeah. of which there's many on the planet right now. I don't think there's any one answer to a very complex problem. Correct. I think there's layered answers. So, um, for example, here's something, I, again, I don't think a lot of people know this. So Amazon.com was tired. You know, these are my words. Mm -hmm. They were tired of being perceived or misperceived as being a conduit to the wild, wild west of supplements. Right. So they came up with some self-regulation. Uh, every brand on there, to the best of my knowledge, had to sign not a waiver, not an affidavit, but just a little bit deeper than an affidavit promising you you're going to do this and this and this and this. And then you're subject to spot testing, which awesome. Like, yeah. I think that's a great step. I remember talking with one of the world's largest uh, dot coms, no names being mentioned uh, within the bodybuilding space. Uh, they wanted to do a program uh, a few years ago. And part of the program was a great idea. And then I remember I got on the phone with a regulatory person and I was like, there's one part of your program that w won't hold water, though. Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to do if somebody came out at 99% to label claim, 97% to label claim? Are you going to throw the baby out with the bathwater? Right. So we have to be cognizant of context and, and reality and common sense. Like, So I don't think there's only one level. Uh, but one thing I ask of retailers, 
Uh, there's a lot of trust that the consumers give our industry and I'm not crapping on retailers. I, I this, you know, we're all part of the same chain here, but yeah. one, one of the gaps I see is that retailers themselves, uh, and there's nothing wrong with this yet. It's just, they, they put all the onus on the, on the brand owner and the manufacturer. I go, well, good. I, I applaud that. Um, you might want to spot check some of us. Like when I sell to a Walmart mm -hmm. or other big FDM, you imagine that the, the checks and balances they do with us to make sure they're going to buy from us. Correct. Yeah. So, so again, I'm not crapping on the independent retailers or anything like that. I just go, I, I think some harder questions sometimes need to be asked. Like ask me for proof of insurance, ask me for proof of a GMP license. Yeah. Just ask me to make sure that I've got this hunk of paper. Yeah. And I think that I think that would help because you can't stop every brand from doing whatever they want to do. You go to the internet, that's the wild, wild west. Yeah. And so consumer as consumers and also North Americans and anybody outside of North America, you want freedom? All right, well, you got to exercise some goddamn mental capabilities too and have a goddamn sense of pride to not get taken and hosed by people. Yeah. We're there to take you and hose you. Yeah, I, I would agree with that 100%. Uh, you brought up something interesting. Um, you know, being having a partnership or being um, having a slot in one of those massive retailers like Walmart yeah. um, is, you know, a great credit to your brand for, you know, gaining that the amount of popularity, notoriety, um, attention, having, you know, a quality product that they want to hold, bring in house. At the same time, does that limit what you can do with your formulations and products? Um, great question. I, um, here, let's back up a little bit. So when I mentioned Walmart, I don't want to have anybody mm -hmm. uh, misunderstand what I said there. So Mutant mm -hmm. is not the brand that we have in Walmart. Yeah. And I'm not saying Mutant has done a six-star move. I'm not saying that either. Mm -hmm. It's our other brand, North Coast Naturals. Yeah. We put in a fiber product in there. Um, we're in other large grocery chains in, in across Canada uh, with PVL, the sport brand, and also North Coast mm -hmm. Naturals, the natural brand. So there is that limit on formulation. Um, not really from what I've seen. Again, within Canada, we have such uh, well-intended regulations, when it, especially when it comes to the dietary supplements. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's no limit um, uh, as long as it's legal. And I yeah. think that's important for consumers to want to, to care about. If, if you want something illegal, why are you buying a supplement anyway? Sorry. <laughs> Very good point. There's, there's, there's bigger stims in other things. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I always take that, that attitude, I guess, with like the natural muscle builders or the natural anabolic supplements. You're going to pay $90 for this bottle of herbal extracts when you can go get something else, some other kind of TRT for considerably less. Where that's legal, You'll... guided by a doctor. I yeah. Guess. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, we sell mutant tests. I know, do we ever put a claim out there that it's the same as an anabolic? Frick no. Yeah. Uh, Indus Biotech, uh, they're, they're the company that make the ingredient Testo Surge, which by mm -hmm. the way, for all you Nugenics fans, they also make Testo Fen, so go figure, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so Testo Surge and Testo Fen both have their data. They have yeah. their places. Am I ever going to, you know, ask big Ron Partlow, you know, He's he's dieted down, by the way. He's he's come down from three hundred plus pounds, and he's semi-retired from bodybuilding. But did I said, Ron, you look like you got a six pack? Because Jim, I got an eight pack, and he does. He's just he's two fifty and shredded these days. But you know, I I would never knock on wood. Hopefully, I didn't do this four years ago, and somebody's going to call me on it. But you know, I'm not going to have Ron hold up a bottle of mutant test and say this is how I built muscle. Yeah, like, I just I just won't do it. You know, when Dusty, yeah. Dusty Hanshaw, uh, he, on his own post one time on, on Instagram, somebody asked him, hey, the, the mutant madness all in, you know, do you actually use it? And Dusty goes, yeah, I use it, but I only use half a scoop. I don't want, you don't even want the full scoop. Yeah. Which on your podcast and, and that other guys who we're not supposed to mention from New Zealand. No, no, we don't. We don't. <laughs> no, I know. He can't I, show up on time. We're not mentioning him, man. Exactly. Not mentioning him at all. I, 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 I chuckle a little bit when I hear some other brands talk about the half scoop versus full scoop. So I'm going to go off on that tangent just mm -hmm. for a second. Yeah. And I appreciate their comments. I think most of them are very well-intentioned. Uh, one or two, I 
think are a little maybe misinformed. <laughs> and, and I go, mm -hmm. listen, everybody's going to work out a different way. And Agreed. so we're not we're not trying to be sneaky bastards about it. I go, listen, yeah. look at Dusty. Dusty's 290. I don't think he's natty either. <laughs> so if I got Dusty at 290 going, I'm gonna use a half a scoop, don't bust my balls. Don't 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 rip on my labels because I got half scoop, one scoop shit going on. I mean, yeah. we're just being honest. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. my intention for somebody to enjoy the fullest workout experience is to use the full scoop, no doubt. Agreed. But you don't need to. Yeah. And you, I mean, you brought up a great point earlier, too, because I mean, a lot of the times, especially like the, the, the more uh, nerdy among us with, with the supplements, like we, we like to dive into the research, the mechanisms and all that stuff. And we look at a formula and we'll say, well, the research dose is this, the research dose is this. Yeah. But to the point you brought up in the beginning, you know, and I've said this a couple of times over the years, like there are certain, you know, it, in an ideal world, yeah, let's all have transparent labels, max dosage, everything. But even like with my own personal stuff, there are certain prop blended pre-workouts that I have in my pantry over there in the other room that <laughs> they're not, it's not max dose on everything, but I can still have a phenomenal workout on them. And it goes to your point earlier where sometimes like, Hey, sometimes you just want some caffeine and some, like a little bit of just like get up and go energy. And the other times you want like the, the fully dosed Mac daddy pre-workout to do everything. And I think that, that's fine. Of course it is. I mean, or sometimes you're working out at night and you don't want to get stimmed out of your gourd. Yeah. 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 I so, agree. Yeah, I, I, I kind of laugh. Oh my God, come on. We were this this is this gets a little too close to cancel culture. You know, that pre-workout sucks because it did this and fuck that. I'm... Okay, settle down over there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean it's it's I, I you know, that's what I love to nerd out over the ingredient science of it. But at the end of the day, it's like, hey, if you can have like you take you sip half of a bang energy drink or some other energy drink and it helps you just like show up and get shit done in the gym. You know, God bless you. Get 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 whatever whatever you need to do to get yeah. up and go. That's fine. That's that's a, kind of another struggle, not a struggle, but like something that always goes back in my mind because we have different friends, and my my wife's a teacher, so we're interacting with other teachers and their spouses all the time, and they know what I do, and so they say, "Hey, man, I try this energy drink, and it's you know, I just feel the BCAAs working for me." And I thought, "There's like 300 milligrams of BCAAs in that energy drink," but I said, "You." Do I burst the bubble or just not just let them enjoy the ride? Just at that point, you know, hey, if they get real serious about this, we can have those conversations down the line. But right exactly. now you're getting into it. If it's getting you motivated to just get healthier, go for it, man. That's the thing. And and you bring up a great point because that, that's that's some something part of the, the the extreme hardcore part of the bodybuilding culture. The you know, again, I, I, I can walk in paths with powerlifting, bodybuilding and God forbid I say CrossFit in front of some of my bodybuilding friends uh -oh. Jeez. Or, or, or vegetarian or vegan. Whoa, watch out. Um, yeah. Come on, people, you know, ease up. Yeah. Let them walk their path. You walk your path. Who cares? As, as long as you're going for it, that's what counts. Yeah. So you don't want to burst people's bubbles. Like we, we do a lot of uh, intense uh, work here. We do a lot of intense uh, sales talk and marketing talk yeah. right now we're going through some extra high level uh management training mm -hmm. all right sorry not to bore everybody but uh -huh. habit forming was something that came up in our in our management training mm -hmm. and it was a good reminder for all of us i mean i when i talk with ron and dusty and, and sean and and, and and andrea sean all those people i go yeah i i am so enamored at how disciplined they are like i just didn't have that and I admit, I go, are you kidding me? Powerlifting. I'm not I'm not shitting on powerlifting, everybody. Ease up. Yeah. yeah ease up, everybody. Uh, but powerlifting, yes, you need discipline. But I would say that those crazy ass hardcore IFBB NPC competing bodybuilders, that's discipline on it. Another level as well. And I applaud the discipline that they have. Uh but some of this habit, good habits, if your buddy's drinking the BCA drink and he feels it and it's only 300 milligrams, yeah, not, don't burst the bubble. He's developing a good habit. He's, right. he's going to earn his way into discipline to have a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, plus some people just don't care. Like, if do they care if they're getting the clinical dose of beta alanine or citrulline? No, like some people just don't care. And then, But there is that, there are other, you know, you know, percentage of us that 
everything like Shane always uh, oops I just mentioned that the, the New Zealander the Kiwi that who shall not be named uh, <laughs> like Shane said I'll push to whatever threshold possible like I'll do go to whatever to get that extra half of one percent that'll make me better and like I, there are certain demographics so that's what's cool about the industry it makes it kind of difficult at times when you're discussing or reviewing products because you always have to put it in a certain kind of context or something and if you speak too generic then you, you're, I guess you're at risk of looking kind of ambivalent about everything or you're being too generalistic with something. But at the same time, you also, I guess you have to be able to put it in some kind of context without alienating the other end or just, you know, it's, it's well, always I'm, interesting. Well, I'm a, first of all, I'm not going to try to please everybody a hundred percent of the time either, but yeah, uh, there's, there's, a, there's more than enough uh, going back to pre-workouts. Cause that's an area mm -hmm. where people will dive in and dive out and try this and try right. that. And that, that just comes with that uh, category because we're all different. We all want to try something. And and I, I these conversations weren't happening 25, 30 years ago in the gym. Like You didn't see two 18-year-olds over by the tricep extension area talking about pre-workouts. And now I hear it every time I'm in the gym. <laughs> so I'm thankful that, it, okay, at least we've elevated some conversation. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm never going to crap on anybody who's going for it in their own way. Yeah. Just because it might not be your way doesn't mean you should crap on it either, everybody, right? It's like, Correct, yeah. Let, let them do it. If that's their speed, that's their speed. Let them do it. Yeah, yeah. Very, very well put. Um, you mentioned Ron and uh, Dusty a couple of times. Uh, what? How do you embrace this? Because I know Ron has been with you a long time. Dusty was for a long time. He's, you know, was with another company for a little bit, and he's, he's, he's back to the family he, well, now. He, D D Dusty damn near died. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he, <laughs> We're glad he's back from the dead too. Thank and I, I love his podcast, him and Ron's podcast with uh, Scott. It's just bodybuilding. It's fantastic. It, 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 yeah. And they, yeah, they, they, they call me once. Hey, Jim, you know, I, got, I don't care what you guys say. Just go for it. Like, don't, yeah. and, and don't anybody mistake. They don't filter any shit by me. They just go for it. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, how did you uh, first come across those two guys? And as far as when you're just, when you and your team are vetting athletes to pitch and maybe bring on board, how has it, like, obviously you have the whole social media component now, so however many followers and engagement, that probably goes into your analytics to a certain degree, whether more brands probably put more into it than others do. But what has your philosophy been from the beginning, and has it changed to where it currently is when you're all pitching new talent to come on board? Oh, it's it's totally changed. I mean, everything evolves anyway. So the way we thought of things 12 years ago, 10 years ago, eight years, I mean, it's constantly, uh, you're always pivoting and trying to make things better and have them make more sense. I think what's unique about us lately, because it wasn't always the case as uh, overtly as it is these days, is that, um, I mean, look, using Russ, uh, Dusty and Ron as, as just two of the examples. Yeah. When was the last time you saw either one of them on a stage? So yeah. our, our point is we're not about just having a competing bodybuilder only and then have them endorse the brand like it's the 1990s. And here's what I use. I mean, that doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So you just don't want to do that. So the reason why uh, Ron and I have lasted so long together, and especially the last two years, is because we've we've just collaborated talked we talk about mutant nation like with i mean you get me and ron and some others in our company we just sit and we just talk about mutant nation we go hey what's the nation we're going to want to do here you know what's how come this thing didn't work oh shit man we got a lot of negative crap over here what happened on that like we do talk and it's like we're not we don't want to have, try to tell people we're going to be freaking perfect and we're not trying to please everybody um, I know some people mistakenly think we are, and I go, get your head out of your ass. <laughs> if you want to be part of Mutant Nation, who the fuck am I to tell you you can't be part of Mutant Nation? If yeah. you want to go for it in your life, like we had, we had, a, we had a, 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 a young lady show up at the booth uh, at the Florida show last weekend. She's lost half of her body weight. She was like 310. A couple of years ago, I just I just learned about this the other day. So the post came to me, and then I'm looking at the post. And and when yeah. you come to our booth, we have a, a you know a fun little challenge. You hold up the uh, yeah. like doing the Iron Cross uh, gymnastic movement with you're just static holding uh, the mutant mm -hmm. mask bags. And she came top five. She and but she, her whole post was there's no way I would have stood in this many in front of this many people when I was 310 pounds. There's no way I would have done this. There's no. Way. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to applaud that. Yeah. And 
anybody who shits on me for fucking me applauding somebody who's done something so good in their life, get your head on straight. So we do get we get we get shit on for some of the goofiest things sometimes. I have people shit some people shit on me for doing the Ukraine thing. I said, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. I'm sorry. 8.7 million people have left the Ukraine and not because the next door neighbor said, Hey, we're knock, knock. We're coming over. Yeah. So, you know, we were happy to raise $30,000 and we were happy to tell people about it. Why did a couple of people got to go out of their way to shit on me for raising money for, for other people? I go, see ya. Yeah. That's a, Hey, yeah. I don't know how to, that's a cancel culture, man. It just comes out everywhere. And I'm like, it does. It does, and I just, I'm curious. I was, that's, I'm, you know, you, you mentioned that phrase a couple of times during our conversation. I'm, I'm always curious, like, it's it's so infested here in the states. I wonder how it translates across the world, and and like y'all are our next door neighbors, but the kindly neighbors to the north. Yeah, we. And I was wondering, like, do y'all have to deal with the same nonsense, or is it like y'all are y'all a little bit removed from that that bullshit? No, no, Robert. Robert, as your next door neighbor up north of you guys, we keep knocking on the door, telling you to keep it down, turn 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 it down. You know? <laughs> Probably so. I was like, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's not it's not only in a u.s thing and yeah uh, but you know let's be blunt and honest here christ just look at the data everybody it's not my opinion yeah. don't try to cancel me i dare you uh but go look at the data the data suggests that there's more of it going on um yeah. and again hey you're all we're all entitled to the right to free speech we're all entitled to freedom but i gotta mm -hmm. remind everybody you if you are a religious person of any kind of religion uh doesn't the golden rule apply here? Treat others as you would want to be treated yourself. Um, didn't your mama raise you right? To, if you don't have nothing nice to say, shut the fuck up. Um, and don't judge another person until you walk a mile in their shoes. I mean, oh. Christ, are we just tossing? Hey, I love it when I hear from some people who are all high and mighty on the religion part. And then those three rules just get tossed out the door all of a sudden. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's hypocrisy in every little niche that you get into. I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah, ooh, ooh. Trying to, like, do I want to go down some of these horribles? I, no. I, have, a, I have a couple of ideas <laughs> <laughs> just popped in my head. I just, Robert, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll meet in Vegas. We'll have some bourbon. We'll get into it then. Okay. Well, that great segue. Okay. Bourbon. All right. You, so you mentioned wine and, and, you know, whiskey, bourbon. Do you have a favorite spirit, adult? beverage libation anything like that well okay last name's mcmahon it's kind of irish yeah. start to connect some of the dots yeah. and part of my lack of discipline from not being a competitive bodybuilder like big ron and dusty and all those guys yeah. is yeah i mean I, I i i i work hard i play hard so yeah. when it's time to have a libation i have a reputation no question about it I like that. So you, you can plop me down anywhere in the world. Okay, perfect. And, uh, is there one and, you gravitate towards more to on like a Friday night? You're ready to just like cap off a week's work. Is, it, is there a certain thing you're going to reach for more to often than not or a special celebratory bottle or uh, drink you'll go for? Uh, well, the first bottle of any evening, because of course there's going to be more than one, usually some nights. Yeah. Uh, no, it's um, all depends on if it's, if it's, hot as balls out like if it's 95 degrees out uh mm -hmm. th that might not be a whiskey night that actually could be uh, white wine and ice and i don't i'm not ashamed to say it <laughs> uh but vodka and bcas has not been a stranger to me and i am not exaggerating so that's a good combination my wife did that with um a it was a i don't remember if it was bca or an ea formula we had that and we put bourbon in one of them, and we also did some vodka in it. And it's just, it makes a, a delicious, refreshing summertime beverage. So, yeah. Yeah, it foams up the inside of your glass from all the BCA yeah, residue. But, but yeah, uh, I mean, we came up with some, and I, before I think anybody else had come up with iced tea five or six years ago, we did an iced tea in the Mutant BCA. And we're like, I'm, cool. I was drinking vodka and iced tea all summer <laughs> long. It was great. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome so good uh the you mentioned the white wine with ice and this is going to lead me to a, to a couple of things um the first time i ever went to vegas for the olympia i think this was 
2016, maybe 2015. I'm walking around. Like, we're at one of the hotel bars, as you always are. And, you know, like I'm thinking you see these big mass monster guys, like all these big bodybuilder guys. And I'm not a big guy by any stretch of the imagination. Like you will never con have me confused with with a, a bodybuilder. And it, I'm walking around thinking like, do you think these guys are going to be like pounding beers or like just pure like whiskey out of the glass? Like you imagine like Arnold or like Stallone doing like you would just see him in, in one of those cheesy 80 movies. And they've all got white wine. And they're all just drinking white wine out of their little glasses and stuff. I thought, this is I, interesting. I would not expect this. Well, Okay, one of the trips we finally got to go on was uh, to Germany. We we went to Cologne for FIBO, mm -hmm. uh, and our I think it was Friday or Saturday night, and there must have been eighteen of us for dinner, and we're at the one, you know, one of the big uh, beer houses there. And yeah. out of eighteen people, I think there was only four of us maybe having any alcohol. Yeah. So the that discipline I go I talked about. And, <laughs> I don't demand it. I mean, Ron and Dusty and, and, and yeah. everybody, they can do whatever the hell they want. But I go, there's only like four or five of us that had any alcohol on the table. And, and yeah. when, when I saw that everybody else was kind of not doing it, I was like, oh, okay, no problem. I, yeah. I tapped out after two beers and called it a night. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying like you have to go and get smashed or anything. It was, no, just, no. It was fun. Like you see, and obviously, you know, I don't know if any, I don't think any of them were competing in the Olympia that night. I, I'm, I would be certain none of them were competing. The, the individuals I saw, I mean, some of them were supplement brand owners. Some of them were athletes and stuff. And it was just, yeah. so you think you don't associate white wine with like a 250 pound individual just like strolling through. It was, no. just, it, was a, it was a, it was a kind of a, a fun thing for me to see. Yeah. Um, one of your other athletes, more recent signings, Sean Ray. Uh, mm -hmm. Can be somewhat polarizing in the the bodybuilding culture. No, time. I've, no, I've, I've never seen that. Just a smidge. Um, what was the the thought process behind bringing him on board and approaching him, and how does that how's the reception been, and all of those kind of things? Well, Robert, the reception has been exactly what you thought it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. I mean, be, be, you, Sean is uh, Sean, but at the end of the day, I go. Mm why is anybody shocked by this? I go, so I go, yeah, I go back to the cancel culture aspect of it. I mean, if, if I'm offended by what somebody has said, I'll say, well, I didn't like what they said. All right. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to go attack them. I yeah. just turn off the, the feed. I don't want to listen to them anymore. Yeah, ignore it. I mean, he, no, there's no question, you know, when he was competing, one of the best physiques of all time. Yeah. I think where he, I get maybe he's become polarizing is with his, commentary like when during his analysis and his you know play by play for lack of a better yeah. term of the of the current slate of bodybuilding on in the different shows he's commentating on and stuff like that which i mean it, it's a very opinionated sport there's certain things you can say all right this guy looks a little bit more chiseled than this guy this guy might have yeah. better symmetry but i mean at the end of the day it is very subjective sport by nature well let's not pussyfoot around this robert let's go right to the jugular here i mean he said other things too and so yeah. I, I go back to the data i go do you judge somebody on 1% of what they've said? You know, Correct. 2%. I mean, uh, it's, oh, it's kind of, oh, sorry, other side. You know, do you recognize the guy on the wall behind me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you judge him by a three word soundbite? True. So True. I go take everything in context and practice the golden rule. Sorry. You, you yeah. People whip out religion on my ass. I go, well, you, I don't think you're practicing the golden rule yourself there, bro. Yeah. so you know be calm be an adult for christ's sake and if you don't like what he said then you don't like what he said uh, yeah. do i endorse everything anybody says no i'm not here to endorse sean or anybody else it doesn't yeah. work that way uh anyways the thought process was i mean sean's a retired athlete yeah uh he opens doors within areas of shows that you, you just can't normally get certain acts. I mean, listen, he's color commentating for some of the top shows around the planet. Sure. So our, our, our thing was very simple. I said, okay, if, if we're going to uh, get together with somebody who can open doors, we got to be prepared to step into these shows then. And things happen, obviously, at the Arnold with Redcon 1 backing out. Yeah. And I caught, I caught holy hell. And I was like, I didn't push Redcon over the cliff like come on every jesus every grab take a chill pill everybody relax yeah 
So I was like, no, we're supporting the athletes. We're supporting the content. How do you think these shows work? Right. I'm not saying it's all about the sponsors or funding. It's not all that. But I go, without sponsors, there, there's nothing there. And how, did, how come Mutant got shit on when there's 100 other sponsors for the show? Oh, because the, the misperception was we pushed Redcon or what? I go, uh, oh, come on, yeah. everybody. Relax. Agreed. Very, very good point. Um, along the lines of the shows, do you think they are still, uh, for lack of a better term, worth it for brands these days? Given the amount of uh, interaction people can have on social media, YouTube channels, you can buy these supplements, you can have Amazon or somebody else yeah. just you know, like DoorDash it to your door in 20 minutes or less kind of things, like a Domino's pizza these days with supplements and everything else yeah. you want to get to your house. Is is the is the expo experience still worth it for brands? Do you still enjoy it? Do you think the consumers enjoy it as much? Oh, I definitely like our experience at FIBO again. And again, you could have shot a cannon through through the FIBO halls this past year and not hit anybody because it was not a big show as compared to the heyday of the show. Right. And it was all COVID related. They had you had to have the COVID pass to get into the building. So there was a lot of that. But uh, mutant, we said fuck it, we're going. And we were thrilled to be there. I mean, all of us were thrilled to be there. Uh, we, we brought out the full 40 foot long uh, booth and um, awesome. we had four or five athletes in there. Uh, Mutant's a, Mutant is a little different. I, I don't recommend shows for brands as, as an overarching statement. Yeah. The brand has to be standing for something. Some brands, for example, they'll use a show as a discount bin for all their excess inventory. Okay, well, the consumer gets a benefit instead yeah. of paying $20 for some, maybe $5 at the show. Yeah. Uh, we do that with some of our excess clothing. You know, we, we, we try to have the clothing only last for so long, and every once in a while you get mm -hmm. stuck with, oh, we got 42 triple X's left. All right, take them to the show. Um, but as an overarching statement, mm -hmm. I would not recommend shows unless you know what the frick you're going to try to do at the show and with mutant nation we're all about engaging i mean there's a, ron and i had this deep conversation a few times and he goes jim uh and this is probably in the last year or so i said you know covid wasn't kind to a whole bunch of us in terms of keeping things co continuous and, and uh right. and going well but our conversations through covid kept us really super bonded together because we 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 all became like more brothers in arms. We're like, fuck this COVID shit. Like we gotta fucking survive. Yeah. So it really backed us into a corner and we came out stronger for it, is the way we look at it. And mm -hmm. virtually everything uh that we talk about now is more about mutant nation and not so much mutant the brand. So mm -hmm. we're here for mutant nation. I why the frick did mutant come up with a vitamin C powder? Was I trying to capitalize on COVID? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure that Mutant Nation had an affordable vitamin C powder. So we did a, and we did it as a powder, not as a, uh, as a pill. And further, I looked up the top sellers on Amazon.com and I picked the price point for the one pound size and I matched the, the, the discount price on Amazon for all the consumers. Wow. And we priced everything on purpose that way so we didn't come out oh we we can sell vitamin c and make money no, no, no it was the opposite it was like hey you need some vitamin c frick we're gonna give you a pound and it's gonna be x price i think it was like 25 dollars or something it was dirt cheap yeah and I, I was when that you know the the shenanigans of 2020 in the past couple of years started going down and you would see different brands coming out with these things like they were hard hardcore brands or edgier like more traditional bodybuilding brands and they start to come out with either a general health and wellness line or like a, the liver support the organ support always made sense to me because obviously if you're going with these harder edge brands you are probably trying some orals and maybe some other aggressive stuff and that's fine you want to try that stuff go for it um so that makes sense when I was one, like, especially with 2020 with the outbreak and all that stuff, you saw a massive influx of all these immune support formulas. And I was kind of wondering about, you know, some of these guys, like to your point, some of them I'm pretty sure were trying to capitalize on a bus. Some of them are just trying to make ends meet. And so, hey, if everybody in the grandma is 
buying elderberry supplements and this shit. The, the way art, I mean, you get locked in your house for six months. Um, you, what pre-workout you're using probably isn't at the top of your list. You know, no. if you're, if you're one of these people that were deathly afraid of things or being super extra cautious, your, your pre-workout and protein powder probably are going on the back burner for a little bit, but you're going to be looking for some of these other things. So it makes sense from a business move. And like you said earlier, there's always going to be knuckleheads and nefarious players out there that are going to do things to try and make a quick buck. So I'm sure there's some of them that had a good intention like you guys did. There were some that were doing whatever to survive, and there were some that were just trying to make a quick buck too. So it's it, I'm always curious um, I the think, psychology of what's going on with brand owners' heads. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to ask each individual brand owner. Uh, yeah. But because of our integration with our athletes, mm -hmm. Andrea, Dusty, Ron, Sean, some six foot five bloke in the UK called Jamie Christian. Massive. AKA the giant, as we like to call him, the yeah. mutant giant now. Oh, and by the way, I might have another announcement coming up in August. Oh, oh. Just don't tell that New Zealander. Just make sure you don't go to him first with any news. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> Anyways, um, no, but be, because like when I, I think I shock. Okay, let's let's talk mm -hmm. about Dusty for a second. Okay. Yeah. So so before before his hospital stint, uh, where he damn near died, and mm -hmm. the man was in a coma for like, over thirty days. Uh, he wasn't with us at the time, and so prior to that. Um, I want to choose my words carefully because I, I, I'm uh, we've made some changes internally when it comes to parts of our, our, our company. And I don't want to yeah. you know, piss on people who are no longer working here, but we made some changes. Right. And so one of those changes was I wanted to bring Dusty back. Mm -hmm. I went to go call him and I wasn't getting a call back. And um, I went to Ron's gym, West Coast Iron, shameless plug there. Great gym. The Mecca of the mutant Mecca, as we like to call it, on the West Coast. And I uh, went to Ron's gym, and Ron said, come in here. He closes the door. He goes, nobody knows, but Dusty's in a coma. I said, what? So, yeah, uh, the day I was trying to call Dusty to say, here, hey, here's why, ultimately, I made the decision to part ways. And uh, it was just a business decision, and Dusty's a very smart, capable business person. So, yeah. um, But I want to make sure we had a personal conversation. Mm -hmm. And anyways, I found about the coma thing and uh, I did what I did while using the coma in a good way. Uh, some people know about it. Not important for me to mention it, what it was. And then uh, when he was finished his contract with the other guys, yeah. I called him up again. I said, hey, are we going to do this? And he goes, yeah, let's do it. And so it was just organic. And, and my Uber point for mentioning all that is it's a demonstration of what mutant the brand and mutant nation is all about is camaraderie we, we keep saying it over and over again and i go well we got to live it and so we have these types of conversations um all the time so i'll have the same type of conversation with any one of them i called up uh shelby she's she's up here in canada if you, if, um go f hit me up on instagram dm me whatever i'll you know shelby's an amazing athlete just a truly amazing athlete and every one of them, Jamie, the first time I met Jamie was, it was at Heathrow at the airport. He's sitting there having some sushi with Ron. We're all waiting to get on the, the connection flight over to the Cologne, Germany for FIBO. And, mm -hmm. But we were really authentic on these conversations. Like after the LA fit expo, we had, there was like 14 or 15 of us for dinner. Uh, Dusty was at one end of the table. We hadn't seen each other in like two and a half years. I'm yeah. texting Dusty. Cause I know little secret, everybody. Dusty likes a cigar too. Once in a while. <laughs> so I go, Hey, Dusty, there's a cigar bar around the, the corner. And he goes, and he texted me, like, yeah, I'm in. So everybody else went home and me and Dusty went to the cigar lounge. We had a, just shooting the shit. Yeah. So this camaraderie is not bullshit. I mean, this is real. And mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of fun with it. We're going to have so much more fun in some of the things we have coming out um, over the next couple of years. Just because, again, we're just trying to do the right. Look at our meal replacement we came out with, Flex Food. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's nothing like Metarex. It's nothing like Myoplex. It's 46 real food ingredients all combined. Okay, yeah. so what if I didn't add in a whole bunch of synthetic vitamins and minerals? If you want synthetic vitamins and minerals, go buy a multi. Um, yeah. But protein's doing it, and gainers are doing it, and let, let's give people what they want. They want macros. And not me just doing a shameless plug here. The legit, go look at Andrea Shaw's 
uh, pose. Like she's legitimately using, I don't, I mean, I pay an athlete a, a, a monthly fee. I'm not paying them, you know, commissions to plug product. In fact, I, I actually tell them, can you stop plugging product as much? Can you take it down a notch? Yeah. Because we don't want to destroy the trust. So anyways, Correct, yeah. we think we're on the right tangent for a lot of uh, the steady eddy and the dependable stuff. We're, yeah. we're never going to be the super flash in the pan. Like we're never going to win an award from that New Zealander. <laughs> never. If I win a freaking award for like energy drink of the year or whatever from that other New Zealand friend of ours, I've done something wrong because uh, I, I don't want to be the big flash in the, you know, I, I want to be popular. Yes. But I want to be popular because we're giving people what they are going to sustain their life on. Just good food. Oh Lord. That's just going to be, I can't wait to hear. Cause I don't know if Shane listens to all of the, I'm not sure how many of, my, of the episodes he actually listened to that I do, but I'm pretty sure Lucas is going to hear this. He's going to excise this oh, little yeah, clip totally. and send it to, send it to that uh, other individual <laughs> just, to, just to, just to stoke the fires a little bit. Uh, he's he's had me on three times now. Uh, I guess I got we all right, we got to do at least two more of these and a third one, so I can just I can beat him on that list of a uh, number of interviews. Oh, uh, call, call <laughs> me after the news we drop sometime in August. There we go. Um, well, that's all right. Yeah, that'll that'll be a good way for us to to kind of bring this thing, you know, and put a put a bow on the package and ship it out the door. Whoa, whoa hey, meant... we we still got three hours to go. Oh, perfect. That, that's fine. I mean, let me just go get, get go grab an energy drink real quick, and I uh, hope we'll be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got my BCAs. I'm good today. Oh, that's what uh, I've got. Some water. It's got. It's in a distillery cup, but it's not actually. There's no bourbon or vodka in this. Then again, it's a little early for bourbon. It is a little early. A little bit. A little bit. Um, you said if you never win an award for an energy drink from that other site, does that a is that a subtle hint at a future? No, release? no, 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 God, no. Sorry, no. <laughs> I, I'm I'm known for being a dirt bag tidbit news dropper on on his uh podcast but no no yeah. there, that was not a dirtbag mcmahon move okay okay all right so there's no there's no mutant energy drink at least within the next six months well they're they're they're, they're uh, yeah don't, don't get me started on uh, some other woes that are exclusive to the, the mutant company <gasps> there, there 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 may be another uh <clears throat> big 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 energy drink brand out there that has a the little use of the name somewhere else in the world. Ah, okay. All right. It's not a stretch. I mean, any, anybody can do the math. I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, there, there's a reason why you'll never see see a mutant energy drink by the one and only mutant company. Gotcha. Uh, anything you kind of want to tease or give a hint at for the listeners, or anything? Or I guess, and also after that, <laughs> you can give us, I guess, your daily supplement regimen too, because I always get guests' daily supplement and take on this too. Well, I mean, do I have any news to drop today? No. Do I have a dirt bag hint? I've already hinted twice. We have some news coming out in August. Um, it's going to be fun. It's very significant. Uh, some of our athletes are already in the know of what's going on as we are hurriedly trying to put together a photo shoot somewhere around the world, not to be named. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's uh, cool. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's something that nobody saw coming. So that'd be pretty good. Um, yeah, and no, it's it's not anybody who you're thinking. Okay, okay, I like that. Um, no, other than that, my days are just full of uh, the fun of of, of, of being a, a very fortunate person who knows how to work his ass off. I mean, if anything we do here is blue collar work ethic, I demand it. I don't ask anybody to do anything that I haven't done or, or would be willing to do myself. Mm -hmm. So. You know, we we walk a little bit differently, I think, than some other brands. Somebody, told, yeah, somebody called me the other day too, and they said, "Hey, Jim, um, if, if you took everything that we could say about us, and they said, original owner, family owner, you know, not a public company, been doing it for over twenty five years. Uh, Ninety six is when we started Fit Foods, so that's the the, the company manufacturer direct distributed in over a hundred countries. I was like, that's quite a laundry list. He goes. Jim, I think there's only a, one other brand that can say all that. I said, really? Who do you think? He goes, Animal. I said, fuck, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, we're still friends with some of the guys at Animal. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I was like, man, that's some serious high praise company to be mentioned within. Yeah. Um, so there, there is that. The, uh, 
the whole thing that we do being manufactured direct that that's part of our big pride uh, that we do we, we got over 200,000 square feet of manufacturing and distribution in a warehouse Whoa. yeah little, little little known fun fact for all you kids out there um the the mutant ceo is also just a, another human as was proven in november this past year i don't know if everybody paid attention but where we are in the west coast we had we had a little thing happened where we had a massive flood that wiped out all the major highways around Vancouver. So Vancouver, Canada, for about a two week period was cut off from the rest of Canada. And about an hour and a half outside of Vancouver was a little town called Hope, BC. Mm -hmm. And those of you who like Stallone movies, go watch First Blood. Yep. That was filmed in Hope, BC. And you see the the road sign there. Anyways, there's about 10,000 motorists got stuck in had to sleep in their cars in Hope, BC. And I was one of the, I, I slept in my truck for three nights. Damn. And I was at the same time uh, where there's, what else? That was about the time when all the creatine crap was was happening. There was yeah. no creatine left on the planet. I'm trying to get a cell signal, trying to find <laughs> 50,000 kilos of creatine <laughs> while, I, while I'm in minus one degree weather in my truck. God, grief. Oh, yeah. So yeah, the blue collar and the real world and, and the, and the COVID pivoting and everything that we had, like, yeah, we lost uh, a volunteer, some other just crazy, crazy shit. Because the last two years, I keep joking with some people, I got to write a book. Like this, the stuff, and it's not just us. So yeah. many other brands and people can, cons- you know, we've all gone through crap here. Yeah. Uh, so I don't want anybody to mistake, uh, you know, to, to think that we, it's simple to get through all of this shit. But uh, with intent, intentional purpose, we made decisions inside the business to just keep going because the first four or five months of COVID was not looking good. Yeah. I, I still joke with other people. I said, yeah, I, I had the bottle of vodka, the knife, the gun, the rope, and was driving to the bridge. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> but it was, it was pretty, pretty dire. And by having guys like Ron and, and, and people like that stick with you uh, that that said a lot that we knew what we had with mutant nation was um, a little special yeah you know i don't want to over i don't want to overplay it but you know we we've we, we've worked hard to earn earn a place and we're going to respect that place and we're going to keep working just as hard to keep building the place and then we're doing the same thing with pvl pvl has gone through a hell of a renaissance we still keep that as our sport mm-hmm. brand and mutants obviously the bodybuilding brand and yeah. But PVL uh, is just massive in Canada, as a lot of people probably have heard, and it's just as huge in New Zealand, for example, and in other places. Uh, we own the registered trademark for ISO Gold. I'm saying that for a reason because I am aware some other people. Mm-hmm, yes, I've said it out loud there. So uh, the one and only PVL, authentic ISO Gold since 2001. Fortified with the athlete's probiotic, DE-111. You can't get real isogold from anywhere else, brother. Uh, oh, so yeah, we're damn proud of what we're doing on, on a whole bunch of fronts here. So we're, we're here. We're open for business. Anybody want creatine? Give us a shout. Anybody want some whey protein? Give us a shout, man. We're, we're ready to lock and load. We've got more distributors coming on board as well in various parts of the world. Um yeah, so it's a uh, it's just proof in the pudding that if we work your ass off, <laughs> yeah, and, f- and focus on that and not and not in all the noise, uh, you, you can get through a, f- a few good things in this life. Outstanding. That is a, a perfect end cap to this interview, Jim. Um, this has been a lot of fun. It's a very candid, very easy conversation. I truly enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for making time. Thank Lucas again. I know he's going to listen to this for uh, setting this up and brokering this introduction. And uh, I'm definitely going to get you back on, Jim, because there's a lot more stuff I want to pick your brain about. But just the 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 uh, ease of this discussion, it's been a lot of fun. And just uh, there's a lot hey, more places man. we can go. I'm an open book. You want to ask me what the difference between citrulline and citrulline malate is? Happy to tell you. You want to you want to ask me why do some people buy creepier and no and other people want no name uh, creatine? There actually is a difference. And oh, by the way. When you guys were talking about uh, that moo less protein, mm-hmm. you might want to ask me a few questions. I like that teaser. All right. 
we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Jim. And uh, we'll catch you all next time on the Supplement right. Engineer Podcast. Thanks again. I appreciate it. And we're at a blast. I, I love doing these ones because we just get into it and have a great time. Right. Thank you, Jim. All right.